So welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, to KubeCon North America hybrid event uh, 2021. Our hybrid experience here. Uh, so for those for those of us who are joining us uh, here in Los Angeles or who are joining us um, remotely live. So welcome everyone. This is the student track of KubeCon, and here we have a. We'll have the brief conversation with people who are uh, building our community, uh, who have started, uh, who have started uh, being the uh, contributors to our community, to the cloud native community, almost from scratch. Uh, so my name is Ihor Goretsky. I'm a developer advocate at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and today we'll speak about the various mentoring programs, about the uh, different ways of how can you get started as a contributor to the cloud native projects. And obviously, we're happy to share some tips, tips and tricks from uh, from myself and from our panelists. Uh, so now it's the time for me to introduce our panelists here. So uh, I will start with Kunal. Kunal would like to introduce yourself. Yep. Uh, hey everyone. Hope you're having a great KubeCon. I'm Kunal. I am a student. So I'm going to be graduating next year as of like, currently it's uh, 2021. And uh, I work as a developer advocate at SIVO. Uh, we also started the uh, official CNCF student community. So we conduct events over there and uh, you can join that, get involved, and uh, I love open source, I love uh, uh, cloud native tech, and I also love teaching. So yeah, that's a bit about me, but uh, I'm going to pass it on to Divya. Hello, everyone. I'm Divya, and uh, I'm a team lead with HSBC. Unfortunately, not a student any longer. So um, my involvement with open source uh, uh, began last year with Kubernetes, and uh, thereafter with this chaos as, um, uh, you know, it's a dog speed. Um, but uh, coming to the aspect of mentoring and uh, mentorship programs, uh, my uh, whole experience with it has been, uh, you know, being on both sides of the coin. Um, previously as a, a mentee on uh, the Google Season of Talks and uh, this year as a mentor again on Google Season of Talks uh, with Litmus Kiosk. So um, yeah, I love uh, working on open source projects um, apart from my day job uh, because it gives me a lot of exposure to things that I would typically not have exposure to. So uh, that's a bit about me. Uh, but um, yeah, I'll hand it over to Uche for uh, his bit. Yeah, awesome. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Uchi Chikuabasi. I'm a software engineer at Grafana Labs, and I'm a past mentee at Thanos. I actually participated in the LFX uh, mentee. At the time, it was called Community Bridge. And yeah, I'm also the co-organizer of the CNCF Mentees Meetup and also the Kubernetes Communities Africa. Um, I'm super passionate about creating like a very safe space for newbie contributors to contribute, learn, and collaborate within the CNCF community. And yeah, I'm super excited to be on this panel. And yeah, I can't wait for us to kickstart uh, the conversations. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, let's speak uh, Let's speak briefly about your experience, uh, about your tech experience, and about your, uh, about your experience of basically uh, kicking off your uh, your career in tech with, uh, with, with, with being a contributor to the open source projects. And I believe that uh, you have, uh, you are with, with the cloud native ecosystem and you're contributing to the cloud native ecosystem because of there's some positive impact that it, uh, it had for you. Uh, so Uche, uh, I believe that you have, uh, uh, you've, you've been one of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you probably, if, if not the first one, but one of the first, mentees uh, with the um, CNCF Community Bridge and LFX programs from Africa. And you're also our the, CNC, the first CNCF ambassador in a, a sub-Saharan Africa. So can you share uh, uh, some, uh, some, some, some more details about your experience and how did the, um, the uh, cloud native mentoring experience uh, impacted your, your life in this case? Yeah, I'll text uh, Iho uh, for that awesome question. So yeah, I mean, I, I really can't emphasize this enough. Um, I think open source really changed my life. So I would maybe share a little bit of like a very short story of how like I 
joined the open source, especially the Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation, how I entered at Thanos, and how I ended up at Grafana Lab. So I'll try to make it as short as possible. So when I was like in second year in college, uh, that was when I got introduced to open source because prior to that time, my goal was just to like build a small agency, you know, here in Nigeria and just like meet small businesses and build websites for them. But when I learned about open source, I was like, okay, let me just try this out and try to know what exactly is this open source. And at the time, there was this conference that was happening in Lagos. It was called the Open Source Conference uh, Africa. So I moved from, so basically I'm based in the east. So I moved from east to Lagos. Lagos is like in the west. I spent like seven plus hours uh, on the road. Um, I wasn't really bothered at the time because I knew what I wanted. I knew that I wanted to gain the knowledge and the, you know, everything about open source. So I went for the conference and that was where I learned a lot about the different open source mentorship programs, the different, you know, open source projects out there. And after the program, I was like, you know, I'm definitely going to contribute to open source. And I could remember at the time, my first engagement with open source was applying to the Google Summer of Code program. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get in. Uh, it happens. But, uh, you know, I wasn't, I didn't let my guard down. I, I continued pushing. And think at some point, I learned about the community bridge, which was the LFX. So I, I learned about the LFX. I applied as well. And I got in, into the LFX uh, program. At the time, I was meant to uh, 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 join the Thanos community at the time to work on, on a project at Thanos. So my experience at Thanos was like, it was an unbelievable experience because that was the very first time I was working on a real life project that had real life users. And what it meant was that I had the opportunity to like make a huge impact, not just to the project, but then to the community. So at the time it was a three months program. You know, I worked closely with my mentors who we were super amazing. I mean, like, I think one of, and I, I think I will still come to that, but I think one of the best things that open source gives to you is they give you access to quality mentors, you know, people that are always looking out for you, people that are always wanting to, you know, make you better at whatever you do. Awesome. Thank you, Richard. Uh, so Divya, tell us your story, please. Um, my story is not as, uh, you know, interesting. Uh, probably because uh, I started off uh, wanting to contribute to, you know, um, the Kubernetes documentation last year. And I actually did end up making a few documentation edits. And then, um, voila, I actually discovered that there's something called as Google Season of Dogs. So um, a fun fact, uh, it's, I think, my ninth year in IT. Um, so I've, I've passed out like really long back, a decade back almost. So at that time, there were no open source uh, projects uh, in general to contribute to. So I recently realized that I wanted to start contributing to open source, understand Kubernetes as a product in general. And um, I somehow stumbled across, uh, across Google Season of Docs and uh, Kubernetes was there. Uh, as you know, one of the uh, projects that was listed. So I approached the mentors and uh, the very first thing that they asked me was, are you a technical writer? So it's like, uh, no, I just, you know, work on systems and I really like uh, contributing to documentation and, uh, you know, I can write English, isn't that enough? Perfect. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's great to hear this sort of Kunal, the person who is helping us uh, Driving and crafting the, the students community in the cloud native world. Yeah, I mean, for me, I started with open source ever since like I was in my freshman year. I, I didn't know much about cloud native or anything. I was just looking for projects related to Java. So I found Red Hat Middleware's uh, Kubernetes Java client, and I was like, okay, I'll start contributing. That was very overwhelmed because at first I only knew like a bit of Java and Maven and a bit of web development. When I first heard about Kubernetes and Docker and containers and stuff, I was like, okay, it's very overwhelming. Then I went to the issues and everything. It's a very every, every student faces this when they look at a big project, right? The so code base is really large, and you don't understand many things right at you know right at once. And I think that's fine because it's it's a it's a long process. If you know, contribute to such big projects, it's not going to happen overnight. You have to give it give it time. That's when I realized that you know the community was really helpful. So it was all about uh, you know how they helped me. They were like, okay, 
you can learn this, you can learn that, here are the resources, here are the good first issues and whatever. Then I uh, started contributing, started with like some documentation, some basic code structure. And then I started adding some examples, test cases and features. And then I, I got selected in Google Summer of Code uh, with the same project. And then I uh, stayed on with that project. I was then a Google Summer of Code mentor. And then I was a GSOC mentor again last year. So I think it was a great experience. And one thing that I have you know, realized from contributing, after that I contributed to a, quite a few projects even you know, outside CNCF, so an inside CNCF as well, uh, both code and non-code contributions. For example, recently I was a part of the Shadows program, which was great. Um, so non-code contributions are also a great way to get involved in the community and uh, also very important contributions. So um, make sure you check out, we have, a, we have a talk on that as well during this KubeCon, rocking, uh, rocking non-code contributions. Um, but yeah, that's when I realized that it's all about you know the community because if the community wasn't there to help me, I would have found it much more difficult and overwhelming to contribute. And that's when I sort of uh, realized that, okay, <clears throat> once you know how to contribute, you can help others get started. That's when you started the channel and local communities and student programs and uh, CNCF uh, community and uh, so many other things, ambassadors program and uh, your CNCF ambassadors. So I think these are great resources to help people. The only thing better than helping people is helping people who help people. Um, so I think, um, yeah, that has been my journey. And that's what we are, you know, as a collectively, as a entire community, you know, me, Uche, Divya, Ayor, and everyone who is in, involved in the mentoring aspect, and even as a normal contributor or who is just getting started, we're working towards getting more young people involved in the CNCF ecosystem. That's why you see this student track at this KubeCon. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I was actually about to ask uh, about, ask about your suggestions for the students about like how, how to be involved and, and so on. But uh, Cornell has basically uh, provided a brief answer to this question. Uh, so Uche, do you have any, any suggestions for, for the prospective students or prospective mentees who'd like to get started with the open source journey here? Yeah, sure. Um, so for me, I would say, I mean, just like uh, Kunal mentioned, there is so many ways you can contribute to open source, um, both code and non-code. Uh, but for me, I would, uh, if I'm to give this advice, I would suggest, you know, try to apply to different open source mentorship programs. For example, GSOC, LFX, RTG, you know, Google Summer of Docs. I think the good thing about these different uh, programs is that they provide you with a structure, you know, for you to learn and grow, you know, as maybe as a software engineer or as a writer or, you know, as depending on what areas you definitely are currently focused on. So yeah, I would say try and embrace these different uh, mentorship programs, apply to them. And I think the good part about, the good thing about some of these open source mentorship programs is that they are also paid. So like they give you opportunity to like get stipends, you know, and all of that. And secondly, I would say, one of the good ways, uh, which is of course the no-code side of things, one of the good ways you can, you know, contribute to the community is by writing blogs, writing articles. So you you mustn't necessarily have to write code in order to contribute to the community or contribute to open source. So maybe you have like you know this particular tool you've been hearing about and you you want to contribute, you can basically just write an article about this particular tool. In one way or the other, you've actually impacted to someone else's life because someone would definitely read um, that article or that blog. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say mentorship programs and writing blogs is one of the ways you can contribute to open source. Great, uh, thank you so much, Uche. Uh, so Divya, do you have any tips and tricks for, for people who'd like to, like to have the same journey as, as we did? So um, there is no shortcut. Uh, that is the um, you know uh, line that I would get. I like to get started with. Uh, there are no shortcuts to anything. Um, you whatever you put into the journey is what you get out of it. Um, you need to sort of be consistent with your efforts. Uh, more often than not, you are going to find it difficult irrespective of wherever you are in your career, whether you're a student, whether you're a working professional, um, 
or whether you're even just taking gap year out, um, you're going to find it difficult to make time uh, because life gets in between and we've all uh, witnessed the pandemic over the past two years. So uh, it's going to get difficult. There are going to be difficult times. Uh, but uh, one way to um, sort of ensure that you get the most out of this journey is to ensure you put in your best efforts, set aside time, um, maybe just a couple of hours every week. It doesn't even need to start at, uh, you know, five, six hours. Um, I work crazy hours. I don't recommend it to anyone. I work crazy hours, but um, if if you want to get it, uh, get in at least a bit out of the journey in terms of um, learning experience or whatever, whatever is your end goal, you need to start off with putting in efforts uh, consistently and over a period of time, um, you know, have your work speak for you rather than, you know, go around, um, uh, you know, battling every, uh, picking up every issue and just, you know, assigning it to yourself because um, you can put your hands um, into different projects pick up multiple issues um, all of that will give you exposure and you probably might even get a bit of visibility but um, to gain real life experience to understand the project and to um, help navigate the ecosystem what you require is consistency and uh, um, you know you showing up to the meetings or um, the stand-ups within Slack um, for that particular project or particular area of the project that you're contributing to. So that's that's what has worked for me. And um, I, I think um, maybe, you know, Kunal and Uche, if you all have anything further to sort of chime in, you all could do that. Yeah, please go ahead if you have anything to add, Uche and Kunal. I totally agree with the point you mentioned, like the best way to get started is, you know, just get started because you wouldn't know what is there unless you get involved. So even just attending the meetings and just being active and listening to other people, that is also a valid you know, contribution because you're actually getting started. In Kubernetes, you know, SIG meetings, for example, try to attend one, you would not understand anything. Try to attend the second one, you may understand something. Three, four, five, after that, you will uh, sort of like understand and actually get started with it. That's actually what happened with me. I was attending the marketing meetings. Initially, one month, I did not get much. But then after in the fifth meeting, people were like, okay, this is what we're doing. Would you like to help out or whatever? So, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, any any tips and tricks for people who are like not sure which project to, to select? Like there are uh, more than 100 projects only in the, yeah. in the, uh, in the, in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and uh, thousands, if not millions, open source projects. So like, like before... What before... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just think like before contributing, you should know like what your interests are. And this is for any project you're contributing to. You should definitely know what it does uh, if you want to be like a member of that community. And to be honest, yeah, I don't think anyone is there who knows like every single project of the CNCF landscape in detail uh, because there are a lot. So uh, the, the projects are also divided into like, you know, categories like monitoring, deploying or security or whatever. So you can select a category based on that, and you can also select it on the basis of your uh, basis of your. Uh, so there are two ways to select a project, right? One is the top-down approach, one is the bottom. So first you pick a organization, pick an organization, then you uh, learn the skills that are used in that organization and whatever. The second thing is you first learn the skills, and then you pick an organization that uses those skills. So I think both of these go hand in hand because if you're a beginner, then you will find yourself in a place where these big projects, you may even know like just 30 to 40% of the things and many other things you will learn on the go, which I believe is great because now you're getting to learn something new. You're also getting to contribute. So I think having an open mind is very important. Yeah. Uh, which should they have anything to it on this one? Um, we, I think Konal and Divya, I mean, they did an amazing job uh, by giving off this point. So yeah, I don't really have anything to say um, to this, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, uh, so I have another question to you, which is, so you mentioned that you had experience with Google Storm of Code and LFX, previously Community Bridge. So uh, what are the best approach, like when are you selecting, uh, when you're selecting the management programs where you'd like to participate in? 
So obviously there are not so many mentoring programs that are offering uh, some similar opportunities, but there are a few. And like, what are the tips and tricks you'd like to give for, for the prospective mentees of these programs? And like, first of all, how, like, which program to select? What's, what are the brief differences between them? And uh, basically some tips and tricks for, for those mentees who are selected, but they are not, they don't really don't know what, what to do next. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, um, basically I would share, I would basically answer this question with my personal experience, from my personal experience. So on the, when I applied for GSOC, um, to be honest, I didn't really know much about the different projects uh, that were, that we are, uh, you know, on GSOC at the time. But then I had a specific interest. I knew I wanted to contribute to anything that has to do with the web at the time. So basically I was looking out for projects that we are within that scope. Of, uh, fortunately enough, I found one uh, and I applied, but then I didn't get some. Um, of course, like I mentioned early, early uh, during this talk, um, I didn't give up. I you know, tried looking for other different mentorship programs and I found LFX. So when I found LFX, because I had I had an interest already, you know, in anything that has to do with web, because at the time I'm, I only knew about JavaScript, so I knew nothing about Go or Linux. So I was also looking for different projects that had something to do with web or like JavaScript or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't see like, uh, 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 any um, during like in the I think in the list of uh, selected projects on community bridge or LFX but then um, my approach to that was I wanted to you know pick one that sparked my interest so at the time I knew nothing about cloud native but then I felt like you know this could be an opportunity for me to learn a new skill or for me to like learn something entirely different so I scanned through again, through, uh, through the projects list, and then I found this particular project on, uh, uh, and I think it was basically versioning, building a versioning plugin for the Thanos documentation site. I knew nothing about this particular project, but then it sounded interesting. It sounded like something that could be fun and something that could have a lot of impact, you know, uh, to people. Because me, I'm super driven by you know, impacts, you know, if this had, would have impact on people, I'll definitely do that. So, and for me, because I had, I was, I had interest in that particular project, I, you know, reached out to the different maintainers and you know, I started, you know, doing research on my own. At the time, I wasn't selected yet, but then because I had interest in the project, I was doing research on my own. I was, you know, talking on the issues. I was joining the, the weekly calls. I was commenting on Slack. You know, I showed a lot of interest in that particular project. And yeah, I wanted to use that project to, you know, learn like skill sets around, you know, building like a documentation plugin that's like Bash, Hugo, you know, a bit of Golang. At the same time, I also wanted to use that project to like have impact. So I, because the, the, the maintainers had seen how interested I was, I think that was one of the reasons why they decided to give me the opportunity. Trust me, I was scared. I mean, I didn't have, I had zero skills when it comes to, you know, the different technologies that were used. But then because I was interested and because I was willing to put in the time to learn and to work on that particular project, I think that was what made the maintainers to consider me. And yeah, I would say in, in three different words, I would say, you know, show interest and then be brave. And yeah, just go for it, basically. So yeah, these are my these are basically my tips and tricks. Fantastic, great. Uh, so Diva, uh, I believe you also had an experience with with with, with the various mentoring programs. So at least you've considered a few. So uh, any any thoughts and any suggestions from your end? Um. Yeah. So over and above what you said, he has pretty much given an elaborate description of what even I was going to speak about. But over and above what he said, I think um, what really works is um, wherever uh, or whatever uh, mentorship programs you're applying to, um, 
please make sure you actually establish uh, a rapport with your mentor earlier on. So, I at least for my side, uh, for Google season of whether it be Google season of docs, um, uh, when I approached Kubernetes as a project, or even when I approached on as a project. I uh, made sure I I spoke to the mentors who were listed against against that project, and I believe that's there for all uh, mentorship programs. Um, not really sure about that. I'm really sorry if you can you know correct me on this one, but at least Google Season of Dogs has this. So for my experience, building a rapport with the mentor, speaking to them, and um, understanding what their vision of success would be for that particular project really really helps a lot. Um, primarily because you will be able to understand from uh, their perspective as to uh, what is expected of an applicant and uh, if you personally as an applicant would be able to fulfill that uh, expectation. Um, so it sort of sets the baseline from where you need to start from. And uh, honestly, it uh, really helped. Like, um, I know it would sound really horrible if I say this, but that rejection really helped me because it real, it made me realize that I'm not a technical writer, right? So uh, how how would anybody choose me if I'm not a technical writer and I'm not proficient in, uh, you know, doing that particular job for a project. It redirected me into a better route because it uh, showed me um, avenues that I could explore. And uh, honestly, even when we were taking in applications for Let This Chaos, this, um, this season of Google, uh, Google Season of Docs, um, we were looking out for applicants with similar um, sort of a mindset because um, uh, you, you don't need to be um, uh, the you don't need to be specifically skilled in one area for every, there is no one-stop shot is what I mean to say. You don't need to be specifically skilled in one area for all the projects. Um, every project that is listed on a mentorship program, whether it be LFX, whether it be Google Season of Docs, Outreachy, they will have different skill sets and uh, they will require different things out of you. So when you speak to your mentors, when you mail them, or even if you just join in the Slack channels and speak with them, they'll be able to give you a better picture as opposed to you making assumptions and you trying to uh, figure out everything uh, with the file lines that's written on the website um, of the mentorship program. So my first and I think the last recommendation that I would ever give for anyone applying is to actually speak to the mentors. Um, email is a very traditional, boring way to reach out, uh, but it still works. So um, yeah, that's, that's it for me. Perfect. Yeah, and Kunal, I believe that there are so many, uh, so many prospective mentees in the students community that you, you help drive in. So I believe you've had you know, conversations with people who've been interested in a, in, a, in a similar question, like which program to select, uh, some, some suggestions like what to do next and so on. So from your, from your standpoint as a community leader, so do you have any insights and anything to share? Yeah, that's a good question. And I'd like to add on my answer to what Uche said before. Uh, Uche mentioned he didn't get selected in Google Summer of Code for the very first time, but that did not stop him from you know contributing. So these programs are great. You get like mentorship and you get some nice, you know, uh, you get stipend, you get, uh, uh, you get more streamlined way of contributing and all these things. But it, it's not like a student cannot contribute to such open source projects without these programs. You can still contribute if you don't get selected. That is what I would recommend you to do. If you're gonna get, if you're gonna get started with open source, you don't have to wait for any of these programs to start when contributing to open source. But then, for example, if you talk about Google Summer of Code, so when you already have some sort of contributions and stuff, and you you know uh, didn't really wait for the time period to start to actually contribute, then when you actually apply to Google Summer of Code, it's going to only increase your chances only. Because the mentors are going to be like, okay, this person has been really active and they are a valid candidate and stuff like that, as compared to someone who has never contributed before. Okay, so that's what the mentors are also looking for people who are actually there for you know open source stuff. Um, so the best way I would recommend for you to get started is just get involved, uh, find the project you want to contribute to, like we already mentioned. There's so many projects you can get involved in, because the project get involved, start solving issues, um, you know, then complexities of the issues will then grow and get involved, get more people involved, help others. And uh, after that, when the mentorship programs start, apply and uh, 
fingers crossed hope you get selected but if you don't get selected you already are already have made a profile in open source so it's fine that's okay yeah and some lessons learned right yeah <laughs> yeah awesome mm. yeah it's almost time for us to wrap up so uh probably it's it's the best way to spend the, the remaining like two or three minutes to to share the last um uh, the last insights and the last suggestions for, for the perspective uh, for the perspective mentees and for, for the perspective uh, contributors to, to the cloud native open source community. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, like I, I've always been saying this and I'll continue to say it. Um, open source has changed my life. I mean, like I'm African, I, I live in Africa, but having the opportunity to work on software that impacts millions of lives, it's, it's an opportunity and it's never something I take for granted. So if open source can change my life, just know that it can change yours too. Um, so uh, when it comes to open source, um, I, I'll give you these few takeaways. Uh, number one is embrace the culture of sharing openly. So for me at the time, you know, when I was contributing at Thanos, uh, one of the things I did very important uh, was I always share things I'm learning, the things I'm doing within the Slack and also on social media. You know, I was on Twitter at the time. Anything I'm doing, you know, at the time we had this uh, Thanos Mentee Friday Hangout. So at each point, I would always tweet about the things we learned every week, you know, on Twitter and stuff like that. I never knew people we are watching, but people we are actually paying attention. So try as much as possible to embrace that culture of sharing openly. And the second would be taking responsibility. Um, I think, you know, if you want to succeed within the open source space, I think you need to imbibe that culture of taking responsibility. So basically what it means is, you know, if you happen to join a community, try as much as possible to, you know, take a tax or an issue and be responsible for that, you know, help out, make sure that you see it from start to finish. Awesome, thank you, Uche. Uh, so Divya, uh, like last last one minute, suggestions for other folks in the community. Um, Uche again covered it all, but uh, the last, uh, I, I would just like to add one little point that is, um, I know it can be intimidating uh, wherever you are at whichever stage in life you are, if you're trying out a new thing, it's very intimidating. It was very intimidating for me to go ahead and, you know, sort of uh, approach people to understand how it, how an open source community works. And uh, I'm very sure um, students and, you know, people who are professionals alike face the same sort of, uh, you know, fear as to... Um, how am I going to approach that person or how am I going to speak at a uh, speak at this meeting? Um, but please be, please be aware that uh, there are no stupid questions. There are no stupid, um, uh, you know, concerns that you are raising because everybody started out as a beginner, right? Nobody came, uh, came into this world knowing everything. So please don't be intimidated. If you are looking to contribute, please just uh, you know, assess your skills and, you know, all these tips that have been shared by the other panelists, please use those tips and use them to get started. That's it for me. Awesome. And yeah, and Kunal, a few words from, from yourself, from, from yeah, your both, standpoint. Both covered it completely. I would just like to say, um, get involved. Best way to get involved is to get involved. Once you get involved, the path will be set for you. Community will help you. And uh, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, if you're contributing to a big project, big project, it will take time. So give it time. Uh, have an open mind to learn new things. To uh, One more important point. Learn how to ask good questions and ask questions in public. Because if you get stuck, then just you know, join the mailing list or Slack channel of the project or whatever. Gitter, Slack, whatever they're using. Ask your questions in public. Ask good questions. And... Uh, you know, Google is your best friend. Google a lot of things. If you are not able to figure it out, just uh, collaborate, like you know, everyone mentioned, and I'm sure you'll, you'll make it. Awesome. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us today at the, at the CNCF Mentees uh, panel that we have here at the, at the KubeCon, and hope you're having a great KubeCon. And thanks, everyone, for, for making it here, for uh, to Uche Kunal and Dave for, for being a panelist here. 
拜哦，拜拜。